Hey everybody, it's Gomladex, and welcome back to some more Magic Arena, and today we're going to be playing another premiere draft of Murders at Karlov Manor. Without further ado, let's get into the pack one, pick one. We've got two rares in the pack, a Wojak Investigator, excellent cheap flyer to beat down with, and Lamplight Phoenix, an excellent cheap flyer to beat down with. Both are good in different ways. If you're really aggressive with the Investigator and your opponent has more cards in hand than you, it's going to give you a bunch of clue tokens to stay ahead in card advantage in the late game. And with a Lamplight Phoenix, you're going to be able to potentially keep resurrecting it from your graveyard as long as you have plenty of mana value in your graveyard for your Collect Evidence ability. So these are both really good cards. The question is really, would you rather start white or start red? And white is the strongest color in this format by a little bit, so I'll go in that direction. Red is still a very good color, but I think the, the colors... Like, white is the best, green's like second best, red is third. Green and red are kind of tied, but white is just really incredible in the set with so many great commons. For pick number two, we've got Projector Inspector to head towards blue-white detectives. This is a really good way to keep that deck ticking, letting you dig through your deck for whatever you need. Pretty big fan of that. There's decent removal with Murder or Assassin's Trophy. Assassin's Trophy being quite off-color for us, but I think this is an easy Inspector. Pick number three, there's one of those incredible commons, actually two of them, Makeshift Binding for really good removal in a set that is somewhat aggressive for sure. You can use this to really win a race, you're getting rid of your opponent's best creature and getting some life. The Market Watch Phantom is great too though, it's often just a 2 mana 2-2 two, two flyer, it's one of the best 2 mana detectives, so it's great in blue-white. It's a really high pickup too, but I think Makeshift Binding just can't be beat. Pick four. Jaded Analyst is actually quite filler, but it is fine filler for a detective deck. It happens to synergize really well with our Projector Inspector. If we manage to curve into that, the Inspector makes sure we've drawn a second card to keep the Analyst attacking. I like that better than Defenestrated Phantom generally, because this is just a large high mana value kind of finisher sort of thing, which there's a lot less room for, and it's a pretty filler one. Alright, pick five. Another Projector Inspector looks awesome here. Goes really well with that Jaded Analyst and just really good in a Detective's deck in general. Technician is decent. We can play it if we're blue or red, ideally when we're both. Lost in the Maze is fine, but I do like the common Out Cold better. That does basically the same thing. Coerce to Kill is interesting because we are a little bit on blue. It's a great two for one, but pretty happy to stick in our direction when we get a Projector Inspector here. Uh, thinking Cap is pretty filler, but I think it's the best out of all this filler. Due Diligence, which is only good on the aggressive. There's Forum Familiar, which is really dirtily. I think we take Thinking Cap. can also just take Extract a Confession as the best card in pack. Stay a little more open. Guess. I think it's pretty unlikely we start heading down the black path, but gives us the option. Dramatic Accusation is like a really filler removal spell you run just if you can't find better removal. We already have one makeshift binding, so we can probably find better removal. Curious Inquiry, it's only good if you have a lot of cheap flying creatures, which this deck could, for lucky. So either of these is like maybe we end up running it. Wrench is kind of similar, just maybe we need more non-creature nonsense. I'll just take the accusation there. Not super excited about that. Call a surprise witness. I do actually think a deck that has a lot of projector inspectors is one of the best decks to use this with, because one of the flaws is that if you aren't trading your creatures off early, you're not going to have anything grave to use this, and it might get stuck in your hand. But with cards like projector inspector, you are digging through your deck. You're drawing and discarding cards. You can just naturally discard something to reanimate with the surprise witness, so I like that. The big uncommon flyer there is also kind of fun. Um, I've been pretty unimpressed by setback. I'm actually going to take Make Your Move. I think one main deck copy of this has played perfectly fine. So that uh, big uncommon flyer out of that other pack, it grabs your magnifying glass and your thinking cap. So if you have both of those cards, then it is fine. But if you don't, then it's just bad. All right, pack two, pick one is just bad. We don't really want to run any of these. Eliminate the impossible could be okay. If we go splashy and grindy, having a board wipe like ill-timed explosion is perfectly reasonable. So I will speculate towards that when there's really nothing good on color to pick one. Pack two, pick two. Again, there's nothing good on color. Dog walker's fine, even if you're not in red, um, but it's not really that good in blue-white. 
for blue white detective stuff. You could take a doppelganger and splash that in. It only requires a single green, but you do really want to make it to. God, how much mana? Eight mana? But if you do make it to eight mana, it does just kind of win the game for you. I guess we're speculating on another splash here because there's just nothing opened up on color, really. Pick three. Another green blue card with Kellen now. Get past two green-blue rares in a row, both of which are very powerful cards, and that could shift us in that direction. There's also a Killer Among Us in here, which is another excellent green card, and there's basically no white and basically no blue. So a push towards green from this direction could be what's happening here. It's gonna be a bit of a pivot for sure. We do go for it. Pick number four, Evidence Examiner. Yeah, that's an excellent card for the green-blue deck. You want to have the Topiary Panthers, the kind of cheap cards that can give you a lot of evidence in your grave early, but this is a really good value play if you do end up in that direction. We just took two green-blue cards in a row. I guess this is the open lane from the left at the very least. Maybe this is the player on our right was ready to get rewarded for having found the open color pair of green-blue, and then all of a sudden I just pivot right into their color pair and ruin their day. Like, that's a possibility, but... Uh, See, I mean, there's dog walkers still in white, but again, those aren't going to be great for the way our white deck was looking. We'll take Rebel Belt Maverick and we'll commit to this here. We're heading towards green blue instead, and things are still looking good. Analyze the Pollen is actually pretty solid fixing for your green based multicolored kind of decks, which this definitely will be. It's going to be green blue splash white, most likely, maybe even splash a little red for our board wipe. It's a great way to find whatever basic land we need because if we top deck this later. We can also just pick up the best creature in our deck instead. Pick seven, there's a Bite Dawn on Crime, which if you've got the Evidence in Grave, can be your cheap removal spell. You do need Evidence on Grave and a creature on board, so it is kind of narrow, but nothing else in this pack goes into the deck that we're starting to build now. Another Dramatic Accusation's fine. Not exciting, but fine. Criminologist is not exciting, but fine. Rocket Elf is not exciting, but fine. Just going to say that for the rest of the picks as we move on to pack number three. So drop Make Your Move, drop Call a Surprise Witness, drop Wrench, drop Explosion, and we're solid green, blue, splash, white deck right now. We only need like six more playables. This actually is looking really reasonable currently, which is a little surprising, but hey. Sometimes you just get there. Yeah, no, this is perfectly reasonable right now. We'd like to have a little more fixing for sure, like a Nervous Gardener or an Escape Tunnel, but I don't think we can take those over Hide in Plain Sight, which is such a good way to, um, to just stall the game out and get a bunch of blockers on board against more aggressive decks. It's also very good with certain disguise cards that flip up for more than their mana cost, because then you can still just flip them up for their mana cost with the cloak ability, which is really cool. Yeah, Hide in Plain Sight's another busted rare. And we have pivoted into busted rares dot deck, Kellen, Hide in Plain Sight, Doppelgang. And the dramatic accusations actually are absolutely going to make the cut in here, because having permanents on the board that are removal spells is really good with the Doppelgang to add to its flexibility, being able to target enchantment based removal spells and not just get two creatures but get two creatures plus two removal spells really adds to the the flexibility there because then you get two copies of a removal spell and two copies of um of a creature instead of just four copies of a creature Pack 3, pick 2. Even though we are deeper on blue-green for the Repulsive Mutation, I think Buried in the Garden is, again, very good with our Doppelgang, and also uh, just the ramping up with it is really nice. The fixing's great, too, but since white is our splash color, it's not really helping fix to our splash, which is slightly awkward, but I think this card is still just kind of perfect here, whereas Mutation is quite powerful, but um, Buried in the Garden, I think, just makes a little more sense for this deck. Got a little more things going for it. 
Pack 3, pick 3, Surveillance Monitor. This card's really good with uh, Evidence Examiner. You get both of these together, and every time you're collecting the evidence, you are getting the Thopter and the Clue. I like that a lot. Another Accusation would be fine. A Reasonable Doubt would be fine. Uh, but let's get some combos going with Surveillance Monitor. Unfortunately, we're not doing great at getting a lot of evidence in our grave early. Uh, I'll take another Makeshift Binding here. I think the glue to hold this deck together, the only thing stopping this deck from just being really nice is that we don't have like two copies of Topiary Panther. That would be perfect. That is the uh, six mana, six five trample. You can land cycle it for two, grab whatever basic you need. That would actually make this deck just look incredible because uh, that would give us several ways to get a ton of evidence in the grave early, and that would really fix the mana for us, and those are the two issues we're having. We're not getting a lot of evidence in the grave early, and we're not fixing our mana particularly well. Um, this pack doesn't solve any of those issues. We just take another bite down on crime that we're just not going to play now that we have all this uh, permanent base removal to go with Doppelgang. I'm going to play all those. I'll actually, never mind. I was going to say, I'll just rare draft the rares since I'm cutting both the bite down on crimes, but I was too late. This is awkward. Our fixing is going to have to be Scene of the Crime, which is really awkward fixing because it dies to your opponent's main deck artifact removal. Um, and you have to have a creature on board to use it as fixing, and it hits the board tapped. It's just awkward for many reasons. Definitely my least favorite of the mana fixing lands, but it's, if it's the only one you find, it's the only one you find. We got a Nervous Gardener! That actually is going to go a long way to helping our mana base. Just having one Nervous Gardener is pretty sweet. Definitely, again, not as good as the Topiary Panthers would be here. But we'll take anything we can get for fixing, and that is still solid. And we need fixing badly enough. I'm going to take it over a Pulse and Mutation here. Let's grab Public Thoroughfare, which is really slow. It comes into play tapped, and you have to tap another card. But I do think it is still slightly better than Scene of the Crime. So 27 cards, three of which are lands. So there's 24 non-lands here. We just cut like one card, play a 17 lander. Cut the Fanatical Strength because we're not aggressive makes a lot of sense. And just already got a deck there. This is the kind of deck that would want an 18th land. We have some really high mana value finishers, specifically just the Doppelgang, really. Um, but flipping up these cards as well. And we have two ways to ditch extra lands with Double Projector Inspector, draw a card, discard a land in the late game. I guess Analyze the Pollen kind of counts as a, an 18th land, as long as we've got a green source up for it. I could see a solid solid argument for 18. I think 17 or 18 is both fine here because Nervous Gardener also pulls out a land. And there's only the one 8 drop. Everything else is 4 or less, pretty much. Uh, to get rolling. Could go for the one Mountain Ill-Timed Explosion, which would be... A thing. I mean, we've got Public Thoroughfare and 2 Scene of the Crime. Those are both... A red source potentially as well. But I don't think, like, if I run Ill Timed Explosion, I don't think there's any excuse not to play a single mountain. Because, like, yes, then I have three red sources for the explosion still. But running a single mountain turns it into six ways to get a red source because it's the mountain and the Nervous Gardener and the Analyze the Pollen. So I don't think I can pass up on, on running the, uh, the mountain here, so I will. I do think maybe I can run just one planes. I really need to get these green sources up, so I'm gonna cut uh cut a planes and go to let's see, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, sixteen, seventeen. This is seventeen lands and an analyzed. So yeah, do this and then cut one more card. Probably criminologist, I mean, we don't have clue tokens sitting around at all, really. Get one from Deduce, maybe get some from Investigator, but we can just sack those naturally anyway. Yeah, that seems fine. Yeah, this will be, this will be interesting. Awkward mana base, but uh, balmy as all get up. We will call it a deck here. 
All right, here's a look at the final deck list for today. We are on a green-blue deck at the core, splashing in both white for a bunch of removal with double makeshift binding and buried in the garden, as well as one really sweet rare with Wojak Investigator, and red for ill-timed explosion as a full-on board wipe. So some really explosive cards in this deck. Again, the Investigator, the Board Wipe, we've got a Kellen in here for a great cheap flyer. We've got a Doppelgang that can swing the game in our favor by dumping a bunch of man into this, getting a bunch of copies of stuff. We've got a Hide in Plain Sight to really clutter up the board state, grind things out well. So we're really just trying to make sure our mana base works well for us. We've got a little bit of digging through the deck to help with that with Sanitation Automaton to Surveil, the Projector Inspectors to draw a card, discard a card, the deduce to draw two cards over time, one from casting it, one from the clue. So lots of ways to dig through the deck. They're surveilling with Maverick as well. So we're definitely crossing our fingers a bit here on a four color mana base without a ton of great fixing, but we've got a lot of good card draw and surveil to help try to get there as well. So that is the deck for today. It's all about drawing the really powerful rares as frequently as possible. So let's see if we can get that to happen as we head into the gameplay. Here we are for game one. This is a risky keep without the green source, but I'm going to believe in the power of both being on the draw and drawing two more cards off of deduce here. We do have two spells no matter what. There's two three mana two twos face down, so we're doing something even if we don't hit the green source. And if we do, we're doing a whole lot. So let's get things rolling here with a turn one island on the draw. Our opponent's on red, white, black, starting with a turn two season consultant, which means they are likely quite aggressive if they're trying to get three or more creatures attacking. Not really what we want to see when we are going to be stumbling on mana here looking for a green source. And generally just not what we want to see in this deck either. I don't think you want to see your opponent being super aggro, no matter what you're playing. If you've got a board wipe in your opener, that's the one time you'd be pretty happy. Like if we had the ill-timed explosion in hand and it's like, well, as soon as I hit the green source, I hit the red source and then we just explosion it up. All right. Oh, boy. Well, as soon as we hit the green source, we're in such good shape. A hide in plain sight to lock things down. Do I crack this clue or just start playing two twos? I'm going to play a two two here. Next turn, I can crack the clue, and if I hit the green source, I get to curve with it perfectly, where I crack a clue and use Kellen, or crack a clue and play Evidence Examiner. Get to actually do something else. Oh, no. All right, not only are they some aggro deck, they're some aggro deck with the bomb rare. The plus one, plus one to everybody, the damage every time they play a creature. This is a super bad time if they do manage to... Um get a dog walker or something one of the creatures that is two or three creatures off of just one card and we're quite dead but i do have the board wipe if we can just find one of the green sources here there are a lot we have seven forests uh thoroughfare and two scene of the crime so we have 10 green sources in the deck we're 13 cards deep there's a Wisp Drinker Vampire. And there we go. So this green source finds us the red source for ill-timed explosion, but I can only explode for four, and they now have a five toughness creature on the board. Is it the combined mana value? No, it's the greatest mana value, so I won't be able to kill Wisp Drinker Vampire if I go for Explosion here. So do we just hide in plain sight instead? It's our best block. Kellen is mana value 4 because it doesn't count the Adventure mana value, so that's not going to be a 6 on ill timed Explosion. If we wanted to try to do that way instead. I think I just hide in plain sight, take the flying damage. This also gives them time to maybe commit more to the board before we go for the wipe. And it gives us time to draw into um, gives us time to draw into the mana value 5 card. Should basically just be our Hellion at this point. 
a Rift Burst Hellion. Because Doppelgang doesn't count, even though that's basically an 8-mana value card. Eh, well, at least there's one more card to kill, even if I don't hit the Hellion. I guess if I get enough evidence in Grave, I could analyze the Pollen for the Hellion to board wipe with Explosion. That's a little interesting. So if I get them to kill the uh, the Crocodile here, I'd be a pretty big fan. Okay, they're not going to kill the Crocodile, so I won't be able to kill the Vampire. Any other way to get evidence in Grave? Or analyze? Re-explosion? It's just not. So I have to pop it now and let them keep the vampire or hold off another turn just to get evidence. So I'm going to hold off another turn. Take six if they play a power two or less creature. I guess I take seven because vampire triggers two. That is a bad time. Alright, so I can crack this clue or flip the gardener for the red source. Well, there's the evidence. That I get the red source from Gardener, I get the Hellion from Analyze the Pollen, and then I can explosion everything. Face down card, they're gonna have two cards in hand post board wipe. It's gonna have to be enough. Here we go. Big boom. I guess I might as well try to get two damage in here. Okay. I've got a million evidence for the examiner. Need four. There's four. Next turn we get a surveillance monitor down, and that means we're gonna have three blockers up in that one turn, because monitor hits the board, collects evidence, makes a thopter. We go to combat, evidence examiner collects more evidence, that makes another thopter off the monitor trigger. Okay, just a slice, never mind. We won't get multiple. They're down to one card here though, and we've got a makeshift binding to gain life when they play their next creature now, which is massive. Set up our blocks here. We need to collect four evidence. So one, two, three, four. I don't think we have any graveyard recursion in this deck, if I remember correctly. So we're just always going to stack up with exactly the amount of evidence we need. There's a makeshift binding on Kellen, sure. Still get monitor in the Thop Drive. Still got my own binding. I can crack two clues here. And see if we can get a blocker so that I can feel a little more free about attacking. A little scared of haste from our opponent. Just randomly killing me. Yeah, I'm gonna hold uh, one blocker up for haste, but we'll start getting three damage in a turn. It's a reasonable doubt if they're gonna try to kill me with... Um, the return two creatures from a grave to the battlefield thing, and they don't have eight mana up for it. There's Doppelgang. 
which will happen next turn. Maybe now that we've drawn Doppelgang and we know that we're like definitely getting there next turn, I should have played it really, really safe and just not even attack with Monitor in case they go basic land and then pull from Graveyard here. Because it looks like they're doing something with Graveyards. They might be casting pull to reanimate two creatures and give them haste this turn. They haven't played a land yet, though, which means that Reasonable Doubt stops it. If they're casting it right now, because it is six mana to do that. No, no, please no. Oh my god. Yep, we would have barely survived if they didn't have another land or... If I didn't attack with Monitor this one turn. That's obnoxious. Alright, well, obviously a punt, but... There's exactly one card it punts to. So, of course, they had it. It's not even exactly one card. They have to have that exact hand. They have to have pull and basic land. Exactly. Ugh. Well, here we are for game two. Hopefully we won't play against something quite as explosive this time around. No war leaders call. Just pinging me throughout the game for that excess damage. Alright. The analyst down. Get the investigator down and just get rolling. Okay. Do want to have less cards in hand than our opponent? But I also would like to attack with Analyst. And I don't really want to play Monitor without Evidence in Grave right now. It'd still be worth it because we have other ways to potentially collect evidence later. Are they going to kill the investigator anyway? So that is perfectly fine then. Means we wouldn't have gotten a clue this turn regardless. So they do not want to trade their face down with Analyst, so it's probably perfectly worth binding it. If I Accusation instead, I could have the um, Evidence in Grave for Surveillance monitor a little sooner, because I can shuffle their creature back to have this in my graveyard for three more Evidence. If I Binding, then Doppelganging the Binding is an option sooner. I really like that option. Permanent Enforcer, Small Sentry, yeah, these are both whatever. And I can still just Accusation here and get the Shuffle in. I hit the Sentry because it can get a lot bigger over time. The Enforcer is just going to keep chipping in for one. It's going to gain them a lot of life, but I don't think the life gain matters too much here. It's not really going to be a race. It's going to be someone's going to end up with a much better board in the end than the other player. There's a Yaris. Very scary. This doesn't uh, get rid of legendary, does it? Nope. So I can't doppelgang Yaris at all. There's a wrench from our opponent. All right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We need one more mana. One more land to doppelgang. So. I need to top deck a land if I don't flip Gardener right now, but if I try to flip Gardener right now, I don't have the mana to flip Gardener and play Surveillance Monitor, so I'm not going to flip Gardener this turn. 
but I will put it face down. And we might have to doppelgang two turns from now if we don't hit the land. Here comes Yaris alongside the face down, which is pretty annoying because if we block the face down, it flips up. And if we don't block the face down, they draw a card. Fanatical strength to save Yaris and get the face down flip here. That is very good. The face down is crowd control warden. Okay, that's not terrible. Well, we didn't hit the doppelgang mana. That is terrible. Grab a land. Guess we grab this. I've got the scene of the crime as a backup mountain, though, so I'm going to projector inspector, and if I hit a really important three drop, I'll ditch the land for it prey on doppelgang again but yeah i was gonna say we're probably just discarding the projector inspector draw okay doppelgang still looks like enough to flip this game around get two crowd control wardens and two makeshift bindings all right the face downs have haste god yaris is wild I don't have nearly enough evidence that doppelganging a surveillance monitor is going to do much for me, so... Again, I think we are doppelganging Binding and Crowd Control Warden. Which means I can let them flip the face down and then we will exile the face down and the Warden. Or I could keep all my creatures so my Wardens are bigger. We just let them draw a card here. We go to seven. I'm going to gain four. Let's do it. All right. Doppelgang X equals two. Get two copies of two permanents. We're going to get two makeshift bindings. We're going to get two crowd control wardens. Exile there. I guess I don't have reach, so the Enforcer's a fine pick, but we'll definitely exile the Yaris. I think I still exile the Warden. I'm going up to 11? I guess they could put a wrench on Enforcer, which is not good. Yeah, sure. We'll exile the Flying as well. Do this. They can wrench down one of the seven sevens. I can still trump though. Alright, face down just the nervous gardener this time around. Breakout. Look for a creature in the top five. That is like the only creature in the game that's actually really good to break out. Bloomkin, because it's super big later. Actually still just a 3-3 for them. But it can be super big. Okay, well, I naturally have all my colors, so now I can ditch Scene of the Crime. Let's Surveil first, though. Surveil that into the garbage bin and then crack the Scene of the Crime. It's another land. Sure. Uh, trade this into a 6-6 six, six if I send in. Still whittles down their board, though. Seems fine. You just have two three threes. I can 
wrench the 7 7, but their attacks are still very bad. Not very, but pretty bad. Alright. Ooh, makeshift binding again. Go to the Bloomkin, because it can get much bigger later. Alright, they're completely off the top now. There's Sumala Sentry. Throw a wrench on it. Rubble Belt Maverick surveils some stuff into the trash again. Nope, we're going to keep both those. Do Kellen first. 13 life, I'm definitely sending in. Put them to seven. All right, Kellen doesn't have haste, but I can four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, five mana. Wait, no, not five mana, four mana to make the clue sack it plus four to play it that'd be eight mana for this and three mana for this i don't have 11 mana yeah i can't uh can't cast crocodile fan kellen fully in one turn okay tap the seven seven means no attacks and then we just kellen it up Their face down is Nervous Gardener again, but this one is much better since they have the Sentry on board to buff both the Gardener and the Sentry. But there's the concession from our opponent. We've just hit too much gas in the late game. Nice recovery from the scary Yaris from our opponent. Gives us a 1-1 one one record heading into game 3. Well, that is quite the start to game 3. Our opponent's on the play, but we can catch up pretty quick with the extra land drop from Kellen into a Kellen and a Hide in Plain Sight. This is wild stuff. Now there's a Doppelgang to top things off. See how our opponent gets out of this if they do. But so far, so good. Oh, and they're stuck on two lands. Just get the Kellen rolling here. See if they have the two-mana removal for Kellen. If not, this could be a real quick one. Oh, they're still stuck on two mana. Yeah, it's really starting to look like Arena has just decided the victory here. Busted opener versus stuck on two mana. Could hide in plain sight for 4 damage instead of 3 damage on board. But I do really like setting up the card draw, making sure I keep hitting lands every single turn to get to the 8 for Doppelgang. And this way I can draw discard off Inspector, plus draw 2 off of Deduce. One during their turn, one from Kellen popping the clue next turn. Sample Collector. There is a blocker that'll trade into Inspector, if nothing else. Six out of eight mana now. Crack the clue. Find a makeshift binding, so we'll need to Nervous Gardener into the white source when we want to cast that, but I can Nervous Gardener into the white source and play binding in the same turn next turn if need be. So I think I will hide in plain sight this turn for more power on board. Hmm. 
I'm not going to flip any of these up soon, but I might eventually be able to do Investigator. Just getting rid of the scene of the crime because I don't want to end up drawing into that after shuffling with Gardner. I want all untapped lands for turn 8 Doppelgang. Well, I guess I already have all 8. This is land 7 right here. Yeah, I guess it doesn't matter. Just a face down from our opponent. Uh, I should have uh, Nervous Gardnered face down so I could flip up this Investigator if they blocked specifically Investigator here. So I guess we just have to not let them block Investigator now. Honestly, you know, I can just throw it under the bus. We're so far ahead here, and we're about to doppelgang. We're going to take it all. This must be a really good face down. Okay. I mean, I guess I might as well get the man investment for Analyze the Pollen out of here. Pick up our best creature in case we get board wiped. We'll have some backup plan. Probably just Crocodile when I have enough mana for it at this point. Yeah, there's not a lot of creatures left. Just take a Crocodile. Sure. Escape Tunnel digs for a swamp. Ooh, Vindicator. All right. This is a big deal. That would be their best way to get close to surviving, but I'm pretty sure we can just lethal them next turn. Oh, I guess not. Yeah, because they can just gain the four right now rather than trying to block with it. All right. That is really good, and now I can't really afford to doppelgang and let them keep a Vindicator on board, because I have to pay the ward for it anyway, so we just have to makeshift binding the Vindicator. And hold off on Doppelgang for now. Could play Crocodile, but... Just in case our opponent has the actual perfect responses here of Vindicator into Board Wipe. I'm going to keep this Crocodile in hand forever. So Whipcracker, that can kill our clue, but I've got the mana to just crack it. More importantly, it is a cheap blocker. And it looks like that might be it. We might just Accusation this and get there. All right, we do accusation it and get there. That is going to be two and one now. Positive win rate for now. See if we can keep it up as we head into game number four. All right, here we are for game four. A bit of a slower start here, and we are on the draw, which could be an issue, but multiple pieces of removal to slow our opponent down, one of which really importantly gains us the two life. So let's keep it. Crawl Whipcracker just does a 3-2. Fair enough from our opponent. We're slow enough deck, I'm going to take the opportunity to counter anything they try to play this turn. Just a 3-mana 2-2 Disguise card, I'm perfectly happy to reasonable doubt. Yep. Boop it. And we are not going to give their Whipcracker Menace. Let's try and get our Crocodile to trade into it since we've drawn into Surveillance Monitor where we can collect that evidence. Get multiple blockers next turn. Tunnel tipster, so some mana ramp from our opponent, and it looks like they kind of need it, so I'm actually going to bury it in the garden here since they're stuck on uh, three mana for now. So I'll still have two more removal spells, so I don't feel like it's too hasty 
to get rid of one of their lands here, basically. And we've got backup plans if we need them. So here's surveillance monitor. Grab the Thopter. Now we've got a board state to start attacking with, and we can crack our clue land during their end step because Buried in the Garden gives us whatever mana we need already. So let's crack the clue. Find Analyze the Pollen, which I think I just save for if I get enough evidence, rather than just grabbing a land here. Unfortunately, not drawn on any creatures to really press the advantage here. But, I mean, the game's looking solid. Is Accusation the face down? Because then I can shuffle the Accusation back in for a couple more evidence. Because if we do use Analyze the Paul and, and collect evidence off of it, not only are we going to get like our Hellion or something, which is huge at this point, but we're also going to trigger Surveillance Monitor again if they haven't killed it. All right, Topiary Panther, definitely a good draw for our opponent. So we're going to be at five out of eight evidence for Analyze the Paul and after I shuffle with Dramatic Accusation. We flood out too hard and our opponent gets ahead here, we can always ill-timed explosion. Ideally after, again, and analyze the pollen so that we have seven damage to everything off of our seven mana hellion. And they're all the way down to eight here. But they do have a torch the witness to spend on our monitor and get the clue to draw another card. Pretty good. Well, I guess that's the evidence for Analyze the Pollen, but we don't get a Thopter off of it anymore. All right, we shuffled their Rift Burst Hellion back. Ooh, we hit a Doppelgang with nothing for it right now. Well, let's Analyze and have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We can just Analyze and cast our Rift Burst Hellion. And if we don't kill it, or if they don't kill it, and then we just doppelgang that and absolutely demolish them. I think it's better to grab Rift Burst Talion here than Kellen. Because I'm not holding anything else up anyway. I guess Kellen is still enough to win the game and draws us a card no matter what, which is big. But we can't doppelgang Kellen because it's legendary. I'm just going to take Hellene. It's just, it's the funniest thing. He plays 6-7. They have to kill it right now. If they play a Chump Blocker, we can kill the Chump Blocker and kill them. If they play two Chump Blockers, we can ill-timed explosion the Chump Blockers and kill them. I guess not, because our Thopter would die in the explosion. They'd go to one. But yeah, Rift Burst Hellion actually does make it... Really hard for our opponent to win without removal this turn. Or not even win, but just really hard to survive. Crack the clue. Leaves them with potentially three mana up maximum. Just a tunnel tipster for a chumper, and that is dead. Makeshift Binding, swing for seven. Really rough game for our opponent there. It's really stuck on mana again with a pretty... Nowhere near as explosive as last game, but a pretty decent hand from us over time. Definitely good enough to, uh, to beat somebody really stumbling on mana, and I'm very happy with our choice to have exiled that first tipster. And now, wherever we go from here, we're at least at a 50-50 run. Three wins locked in. See how far we can take it, heading into round number five. Please don't take a drink every time I say see how far we can take it. Here we are on the play for game five. We got the doppelgang. Got a maverick into an inspector. Looks fine. I could get greedy because this is a detective and just wait to play it till inspector's on board, but I'm just going to drop in and surveil. Set up our early draws. Kellen and undercover crocodile? Yes. Yes is my answer to that. 
I guess I actually mill the Crocodile, because there's a chance there's a land underneath Kellen, in which case we can play land four and play Kellen on turn three, um, instead of having to analyze and wait for turn five for Kellen. In worst case scenario, that's six evidence, which is kind of sick. Woo! All right, let's see if we top deck that land four. Since we milled the crocodile. Elf. Vengeful Tracker. No, oh, don't shoot me in the face when I crack clues. We did hit land four, by the way, which is awesome. Yeah, this just shoots me for two every time I crack a clue, basically. But Kellen gets around it. Kellen destroys clues. Doesn't sacrifice clues. So getting the, the free cracks from Kellen also shuts off the damage from Vengeful Tracker, so that's really sweet. If Kellen manages to stick around, this is a black-red deck we're talking about. You could easily have a murder for double black and one to destroy Kellen. They could also have the Torch the Witness for a red and two to deal four damage to Kellen. They wouldn't get their clue if they use it this early, though, if they had that uncommon X mana removal spell. So if it's specifically that, they might want to wait... Oh, unless I block and then they use it or something. Yeah, no, we'll take two. Blocking with Kellen just opens up the door to a lot of ways you can die here. Let's draw our card before we make any choices here. We could draw in something that's better to play. Then our current hand. Scene of the crime. So that's our land for turn, worst case scenario. So I might not have to play Analyze the Pollen, where I can play Projector Inspector here. And maybe not play Analyze the Pollen until we have eight evidence and just get another big finishing threat. Um, I think I'd weirdly rather keep it playing than Scene of the Crime, because I'm scared they could have the Orangutan out of red. It's probably better to just keep seeing the crime. Because we can crack it later if we need to, and it's also just already the red source for our board wipe if we have to do that. Long goodbye. Destroy something with mana value 3 or less, which doesn't destroy Kellen. Does destroy our inspector, though, but we've got the evidence for Analyze the Pollen at this point. With Doppelgang in hand, there's definitely a world where we still just use Analyze the Pollen on a land regardless. It's a person of interest now. Jaded Analyst. Off the top. You can play Analyst and Makeshift Binding and Analyze the Pollen in the same turn. I do think we are trying to buy time. Oh, that was my one planes. That's kind of awkward. I guess because I have the scene of the crime, I can just get my one mountain, but now I have to... I have to tap one of these two to the makeshift binding. I guess I could tap Kellen post-combat, but then Kellen's dead to the destroy target tapped creature, so let's not... Get rid of the suspect. Maybe better to kill the token. Because then if they do have some way to deal with makeshift binding, they get nothing back. But red and black, historically speaking, don't really have ways to deal with enchantments. They'd have to surprise me with a plot twist forest or something. I was drunned all along. Naturalize. Alright, there's the removal for Kellen, and now we are waiting for the Doppelgang to win us the game, but we're only one land draw away from it. Even if we just get two 2-2s two and two makeshift bindings, that'll be enough to win, so... We are vibing over here. I'm 
taking four damage a turn though, which is sketchy. If I hit non lands a couple turns in a row, this could be very bad. All right, we hit the land immediately. Vengeful Tracker and Makeshift Binding. Auto pay. We get to exile their board and have two two twos. Not choosing the red herring because they can respond by sacrificing the red herring. And then I will get no tutus. Even though it would be nice to have the flexibility of... Um, the flexibility of cracking them later. Look at that vengeful tracker value. Shoot them in the face for four. Let's go. That's a solid felonious rage for our opponent, though. Still keep A2-2 here. Kind of in a top deck board. They have three cards and we have zero in terms of cards in hand, so they're probably actually pretty even. Out of three cards, they just need a 2-2 two -two and a 1-1, one -one, and we're at parity here. And it's anyone's game. There's the 1-1. One -one. Where's the 2-2? Two -two? If it's bigger than a 2-2, they're actually ahead on board, but we're ahead in life total. Convenient target? Okay, that doesn't really change things. Uh, we do think they have a combat trick because of how they played earlier attacking into the Kellens, so I don't think we block here. I think we just crack back. They're at 8. Well, we won the top deck war. So that is an absurd draw. None of these are creatures, just go land, land, so we don't draw into lands. Could crack the scene of the crime right there in case I had a one drop. I guess a two drop, because you can tap the scene of the crime and use its own mana towards cracking it. Yeah, I should have cracked scene of the crime for mountain and scene. Doesn't matter though, the hide in plain sight is more than enough to make that board state very far in our favor. We are now 4-1, and one, guaranteed to be breaking even out of the event, getting 1,400 gems and some packs for the 1,500 gem event. Really nice stuff as we head into round number 6. Here we are on the play for game a lot. A solid opening hand. Analyze the pollen immediately so I can go Analyst turn 2, which when you have Projector Inspector in hand is actually pretty exciting, so I will go ahead and do that. So Analyst and 2, Inspector, ditch the island, keep the thoroughfare. Is that a detective as well? Ooh, it is. Now I can play a turn four monitor, um, exiling a crocodile from grave because we can discard that to inspector. This is going to be sweet. Now we discard thoroughfare, which is kind of awkward because it is an important land. Okay, I can discard old time explosion here. Mm -hmm. Like I kind of want to keep crocodile now because then I can go. Analyst, Inspector, Monitor, Crocodile. That's just a wild curve. I think losing out on Thoroughfare is losing a lot of mana. Losing out on the island means we don't guarantee we're playing Monitor next turn. And losing Ill-Timed Explosion means we don't have a good backup plan. I think we still discard Crocodile, but I'm a little sad about it. Ill-Timed Explosion is just such a fantastic backup plan if we fall behind. There's their own projector inspector. Do their own digging. Alright, now we've got the bonus land we can ditch. Obviously pre-combat the detective so that the analyst can attack. Find a natural planes. I don't have double blue cards in this deck, do I? No, I'll keep the natural planes. It's fine. But I could want to play two blue cards in one turn, maybe, but... We'll see. 
No more detectives in hand, so I'm going to offer the inspector trade here. They might take it, because it means that uh, we've got nothing on board to keep triggering analysts. But we have nothing in hand to keep triggering analysts, so... Two, two face down makeshift binding i could just clear a path but i don't need to monitor already attacks into that perfectly well and analyst can't attack unless i draw a card this turn anyway so i'll just spend the turn on thoroughfare and they're down to 10. The flip is a Nervous Gardener really setting up their mana here. They've already got three colors plus one of any with Thoroughfare. But they just grab another Forest. So just a three color deck over there. There's the Bite Down on Crime on Surveillance Monitor. Scene of the Crime, I will absolutely trade my 3-2 Defender for your 2-2. Find Dramatic Accusation. All right, well, they're on a 10-turn clock. Let's go, team. The team is just Thopter now. Just one ringleader. Oh, God, our hand is terrible against Detective Satchel. I mean, that card is just great in general, but... God, it is fantastic against removal spells that specifically target creatures. And against board wipes, because they're going to draw two extra cards, and they're going to get two extra flyers, and there's nothing I can do about it, so. I don't think I could come up with a card that's much worse than that. If they played Rakdos or something, that would be bad. They would draw two cards, but then I would immediately kill Rakdos, and that'd be fine. And that would be, like, the worst creature in the set for them to play. Yeah, no, I think Detective Satchel is legitimately at least top three worst cards we could have seen. Oh, no. Well, we're probably just losing to Double Satchel. That is really going to grind things out. Okay. If they don't have removal in hand, then Kellen is absolutely a response to Double Satchel. Because Kellen can destroy the Satchels. It's going to have to fight through an army of 1-1s to do it, but here we are. I'll let my Thopter fight through 1-1-1 one, one, one so that Kellen has a slightly easier time if he sticks around. And if he doesn't stick around, I'm going to have to board wipe a bunch of Thopters anyway, so I'm not losing much losing a Thopter. It's going to trade into a Thopter on blocks or trade into a Thopter on attacks. It's like the same difference. It's stopping that attacker from hitting me for one next turn. Croft's Eidetic Memory, another card that is really good against just creature removal. Just an incredible enchantment that's going to keep buffing up their board every turn. They get plus and plus one counters equal to the extra cards they've drawn. How do you have three detective satchels? No. Not only three detective satchels in your deck, but three detective satchels in the top half of your deck. Which means on average you have six in there, right? Oh. My god. I mean, what do you even do, honestly? When your opponent has triple satchel eidetic memory... Look through my deck real quick. Yeah, no artifact removal. We could find a doppelgang, and I would still have a worse board state. So we're the only our only shot here is doppelgang now. I have to like. I have to like binding binding. To attack with Kellen. So that they only have three 1-1s one on blocks. Because if they have four 1-1s, one that's too much. I have to kill both of these, so it's just three creatures.
All right, three one ones isn't enough to kill Kellen. So we can kill a Satchel now, and then we can kill a Satchel next turn, but next turn Kellen's dead too. Next turn we trade Kellen into a Satchel. I mean, we trade Kellen into a Satchel and three Thopters next turn, because they block it with four, and I kill three of the four. This is all still assuming they don't find a way to kill Kellen still. Yeah, it is. Oh my god, they do! It is like six satchels! What the hell? Um. Yeah, we're, we're still. <laughs> still on the all in doppelganger. Uh. This is actually hilarious. Good lord. I love how when the first satchel came out, I was like, that's probably one of the worst cards they could have for me. And then three more showed up. Well, that was pretty advantageous to us. They did it all sorcery speed here. Because now I can explosion for three. Yeah, since they didn't hold up satchel at instant speed, this is going to go really bad for them. So I'm really happy to see that. Obviously just card a three drop. I guess we're cracking a clue here. Because we had to use our blue and our red there, so we couldn't have held up examiner mana. I might as well do it now in case I hit a basic. Nice. Well, they're down to six. We continue to try to grind through the satchels. Now they can only get two one ones in the sky. Why well, it's their own Kellen? Well, I still got accusation. They're gonna tap out to play Kellen and get two one ones this turn. This is not quite tapping out. They'll have one mana of any color up, thanks to public thoroughfare. But for one mana, we should be fine. Oh, it's two mana. Miscounted. Accusation Kellen. Sweet. Send in Kellen, kill another detective satchel. They can only get one Thopter a turn now. I mean, if you're going to get quad detective satchel, having a Kellen's probably like your best bet, right? Wojak Investigator looks really good on this board, especially considering they have not played removal in like five turns. So they probably can't kill this uh, Investigator either. Holding up the uh, double blue to shuffle their Kellen back in, in case they try to blow up Dramatic Accusation, I can respond by shuffling Kellen back. I don't want to do it right now though, because their deck's pretty small, so if I shuffle Kellen back immediately, they might just redraw him. So I'm just going to try to keep the mana up for like the second they try to save him, rather than preemptively doing it. That's the fifth! It's the fifth! How do you even open that many in a draft pot? <laughs> There's a 0% chance anyone in their draft pod took a single copy of Detective Satchel. Because the odds of even just having five dancing around the draft pod are pretty dang low. God, that is wild. Alright, we don't have a removal here, so we have to kill in the, um, the blocker rather than a Satchel to, to get in this turn. So that's what we do. And they're down to four. I'm supposed to pre-combat this thing. I forgot. I for gore. Projector inspector? Okay, that's kind of sweet. 
find the doppelgang? No, we didn't find the doppelgang. Uh, I'll ditch this land. Face down a nervous gardener. Could still get board wiped, I guess, but we've got the uh, evidence examiner to give us clues post board wipe. Yeah, and they're just going to mill out if they board wipe at this point. Still have to find a way to win within like six turns. They're just over it. What is going on? The five detective satchel deck, but the zero removal deck. I don't think they cast. Oh, they did cast a bite down on crime. They cast one removal spell all game. That is lucky for us. Yeah, Kellen put in so much work. That game would have been unwinnable without Kellen. I thought it was over at the first satchel, and then four more satchels for five total detective satchels showed up, but because we had Kellen to just keep ripping the satchels out of there, we managed to grind it out. I don't even know what's in their hand. They drew, like, their whole deck. But they just couldn't stop Kellen. The unstoppable force. We are five and one now, heading into game number seven. All right, Kellen's back. Obviously the best card in our deck from how things have been going. So that's a snap keep. Get another turn three Kellen here. That might die to a black removal spell, but it is what it is. Got to make him have it. Do they have it? You have the two mana make me sack a creature? Or the makeshift binding now? Yep. They got me. So, didn't hit land drop for turn. I can deduce, and if that still doesn't hit a land, I can crack a clue. Alright, now... I did hit a tap land, so we automaton and play a tap land. Find Buried in the Garden. I like that card enough to keep it, even though it's a little awkward here. Because I have to have a creature on board to cast it. I'll need to get mana out of Scene of the Crime, so I'll need to tap a creature. I think we're just cracking a bunch of clues here, trying to stay ahead in value. Letting them play a bunch of stuff that starts affecting the board while we just draw a bunch of cards and set up an ill-timed explosion and then we slam down some big creatures after that. Feels like a strat. Reasonable doubt. Alright, well now I'm holding that up. Because it's kind of free to hold it up when you have a clue on board. If you don't cast it, then you get your clue man out of the way and you draw your card. The one difference here is that if I had sacrificed the clue during my turn, then we could have played a land had we drawn it. We didn't play a land that turn. Um, that gives them a card after we board wipe at the very least. Uh, so I could bury it in the garden, or I could reasonable doubt it. I think I'll bury it in the garden here and get more mana out of this card. That feels solid to me. So we'll still stop them from getting the clue token for the extra card, and then I'll have more mana in the future. I was going to say, if they go for the next level play and attack into Automaton, they actually do just deal three to me, because I do need this for the scene of the crime. Okay. I'll have three mana up after, thanks to this tapping for two now, so I will be able to play Projector Inspector post Buried in the Garden. So I can still have a blocker up. Is it better to still have a blocker up than it is to hold up reasonable doubt? Probably with a board wipe in hand, because we're not really going to counter any creatures. Okay, hey doppelgang. Think we ditch reasonable doubt? I think so. Start tapping out every turn for really big spells. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. I can just hard cast a Hellion. And then we have stuff that just survives the board wipe and makes it one sided. Furtive Courier. That yeah, seems like a decent plan, unless they just reasonable doubt us.
You know, I don't hate taking this and then playing Crocodile this turn, triggering Inspector again and sending him with both. Ooh, especially with Analyst, then we actually kind of wanted to keep Inspector out. But I think getting Inspector to trade with Courier is still worth it. Sunset draws and discards them a card every turn. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Then I play Hellion instead, since we're not getting an ETB trigger anyway. Drag the canal. Since a creature died, they get a 2-2. Two -two. Gain 2, Surveil 2, and Investigate. So that's why they really were super open to trading on attacks and on blocks there. They wanted to get the full value off that. That is very good value. Surveil 2, draw another card off a clue. And get their 2-2. Two -two. Nice little 2 for 1. Ooh, and the Undercity Eliminator to exile Hellion at the cost of just a clue. It's also pretty good. Down to 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is the 8th mana. I can Doppelgang. Projector Inspector. Undercity Eliminator. I'm not even really excited about that, honestly. Still. So I could play Crocodile and still be kind of chilling on board. And Crocodile's big enough, we might be able to make Ill Timed Explosion one sided. I do have the 8 mana for the uh, instant speed flip, so let's go face down and then flip it up at instant speed and maybe get a free kill off of it. Combat send in the 2 2, send in the 3 3. All right, let's see what tricks they've got. Get them to expend all those, because boom, 5-5. Five, five. Ah, it's just murder. All right. That would have killed our crocodile at any point. So two cards left in hand. They did not. I'm on a board wipe still. I mean, I guess we doppelgang then, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's no reason to board wipe when I can just doppelgang two more copies of Buried in the Garden. Eight, nine. I need 11 mana to doppelgang for three. I think that's too long to wait. I guess I can pull a counterspell out of their hand. Maybe they are on blue. If they have a counterspell, they are going to get us when we try to doppelgang. But if I ill-timed explosion, I might not have high enough mana value to kill Eliminator. Eh, it's kind of whatever. I will doppelgang here for two. We want Buried in the Garden. And Projector Inspector. Put it on this, put it on this. Oops. Put that there. We'll put that one there. All right. Well, that's that's triggers. Exile. Exile. And then four draw a card, discard a cards. Yeah, Jaded Analyst is bad enough. We can uh, cycle through and replace Analyst with something here. Or just ditch a bunch of lands. Watch me mill out now. Too excited about drawing cards. Use this extra mana while we got it. I think I need a 3 5 investigator. Should get 7 power on board to start swinging. Unscrupulous agent. That's rude. This is no longer looking like an ill timed explosion game, so I'll get rid of that. And then a cold case cracker. Analyze the pollen. What creatures do I even have left? Surveillance monitor. And evidence examiner, basically. So I guess we just grab a surveillance monitor off Analyze the pollen. Okay, well, we have great attacks on board already. Yep, this looks good with me. 
I have practically infinite mana now, so let's do all the things. Uh, eight mana value, there's six, seven, eight, boop. Surveillance monitor. Get four mana value. I'm no longer drawing discarding. I'm getting a little low on library, and there's nothing I would rather have in hand than Wojak Investigator. Uh, one, two, three, four. Oop. Here's the Investigator. And Decline. I have no cards in hand. I guess I could have cracked the uh, scene of the crime and then responded. Then drawn and discard if the card in hand was weak. Like if I draw land off of this. It's a forensic researcher. Alright, well, since we didn't crack scene of the crime, we get a clue from Investigator. Although we don't want to mill ourselves, and I'm about to mill two cards off hide in plain sight. Probably just going to let all these clues just cheer on from the sidelines. Should be like, yeah, you could draw so many cards. I'm scared. I don't want to do it. Ooh. All right. Good trick from our opponent. Kill the projector without losing a creature there. Um, I don't really want more clues. I don't really care about flipping up examiner. Actually, I get more thopters, though, so it's worth it. So, we'll take that. Flip it up next turn pre-combat. So because it triggers and lets us collect evidence every turn, the monitor doesn't care how we collected evidence. It'll just give us a thopter every time. It's great here. You got me. Is there a ninjutsu in this set? No, it's just a death touch lifelink trick. I thought I got got <laughs> when they started looking at the agent. I'm like, this is about to be terrible. They put ninjutsu cards on the list? No, they didn't. More investigating. Oh, no, I don't actually investigate this time. Disregard that. All right, move to combat and I get to collect evidence. Here's four evidence. Boom. Okay, tap surveillance monitor since that one is three damage. Take the rest. Again, I don't think I'm cracking clues. Our deck is two creatures, three removal spells, five lands right now. Just gonna really make sure we don't mill out. Unless we're on a turn where like it's insta lethal. Public thoroughfare. Now there's only four lands in there. Three removal spells still. The removal still isn't lethal though, because they researcher. I guess we remove the agent. Researcher down that, take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it's still not lethal, so. Perfectly happy to just send in. One, two, three, four. So much evidence. 
stack is just like working at the DMV, just sifting through papers. I'll choose the face down in case I'm trying to surprise lethal them. Ooh, they've got another death touch trick. Nope, they're just stopping three damage. Never mind. Thought maybe they were going to stop our surveillance monitor evidence examiner combo. Kaya. Probably not enough. Yep, that's two blockers. That's very much not enough. And we're good. There's the concession. We're now six and one with this deck. Very far in the money and only one win away from a maximum win run, a maximum prize out run. This has gone really sweet for the uh, the pivot into the green mush, the green multicolor goop deck. I mean, it's absolutely an archetype when you've got a bunch of bombs, and we certainly do. See if we can keep drawing them as we head into a game number eight. Here we are for game eight on the draw. Got a turn one Maverick, turn two Thoroughfare, and then our mana's perfect from there for whatever we want to do. There's an Evidence Examiner. Um, I do like lands a lot in this deck. But not really for this hand. It's all three mana or less still. Also, Examiner isn't actually a good draw right now. We need four Evidence in Grave, which isn't happening anytime soon. These are all permanents that aren't going to the Grave. I'm actually just milling both of these. Two cards that would generally be pretty nice. I just don't think they work with what we've got going on right now. Sanitation Automaton from our opponent, so I could try to curve out and get a little aggressive here, but green-red, I don't think that's going to stack up in the long run. Just make sure we get the blue source ready. There's the turn three face down that we can't make shift binding because of the ward two. Pass turn and hold up reasonable doubt here. I could also Sanitation Automaton, but if I hit a fourth land, then I've got a really good turn where I get to cast the Automaton and still hold up reasonable doubt. And it could be any land in the deck. Any untapped land, that is. It couldn't be the two scene of the crimes. Those would be bad. If we hit an island specifically, we could analyst and hold up the reasonable doubt. I mean, we really just want them to play another face down. Because being able to Reasonable Doubt to deal with a face down without having to pay for the ward is pretty big. Because all of our other removals going to be 5 mana to deal with a face down. Like I'm cool with it just being like a Nervous Gardener or something. Just so we can deal with a 2-2 ward too. A little more efficiently. Alternatively, again, the Analyst and the Automaton are pretty good ways to try to deal with those. Expose the Culprit. Turn it face up. Uh, you got it. It's a Bloomkin? Aww. <laughs> I was really hoping it was just like a 6-7 or something, and they're just trying to combo us by getting a really big creature really early, but the fact that it draws them two cards is rough. I think that's even the only face down that flips up to pull two cards out of your deck. Yeah, I think probably the only face down I actually would care to counter that, because most of the other ones I would just make shift binding next turn and we're good. Not that one. That one's an excellent ramp spell when they play it that way. Well, we hit the tap land, so we can't play a creature and hold up a reasonable doubt, but now I know I can do that next turn, so I guess I'll give them one turn to resolve something, and then hopefully just binding whatever they resolve anyway. I'm going to stop this potential four damage that's coming to us next turn. We are against a green deck, so they could definitely have ways to deal with makeshift bindings and dramatic accusations, so our removal might be a little awkward. There's the 4-4 Vigilance. Yeah, that is a-okay. Plenty of ways to deal with that. I am realizing I want to top deck a land every turn. 
because a land here would mean binding plus hold up the reasonable doubt, but not hitting the land means we have to not hold up the counter. Well, that's not got no abilities while it's tapped, so I think we're gonna um, we're gonna just tap it forever rather than exile it. Get in there, Maverick. Let's hit all 20 points of damage off this Rubble Belt Maverick. It's going to be sweet. Face down is certainly annoying. Double face down is doubly so. Now I can Automaton and Analyst and hold up Reasonable Doubt. So here we are. They've got enough mana to flip up six sevens and five fives that draw them cards and all kinds of terrifying disguised threats. And I cannot counter them flipping a face down up. So this could be bad. We've still got four more cards in hand too. Yeah, I mean they did get a big three for one off the Bloomkin. I had to spend removal on it and they drew two cards off of it. Drew two lands off of it. I guess it was just a two for one because they had to spend and expose the culprit as well. But that was a really nice turn for our opponent. I just block with automaton, force them to flip this turn. Probably not. I can just take two damage, and if they want to flip, then I get to know exactly what's coming at me next time that thing swings. Hmm. If we do that, I'm a little bit more obligated to lock somewhere. still think I'd rather try to get them to dump man on a spell than on a flip, so I'm just going to not block and see if that means they're going to just go for another creature here. We can get the reasonable doubt out of here. No, they're just going to go for the flip. Oh my god, yeah. And this is where enchantment-based removal becomes a liability. Yeah, it just looks like a very good matchup for our opponent. Enchantment-based removal is the only removal we run. And they have tons of ward as well to really tax me. Oh, well, I can really dig for doppelgang, I guess. At this point. We're basically just... Yeah, I was going to say, discarding anything but Doppelgang. Need two more mana. It's like the only card that can kind of swing this back for us. If we can get there. Good lord, yeah, their deck's really good against stars. They've got main deck, pick your poison too. And that's just another way to blow up one of our enchantment-based removal spells. They could have got rid of my accusation if they wanted there. They might be like finding lethal on board. Yeah, oh my. This is just a lot of really efficient removal. Now it's looking like ill-timed explosion is our only out. Because they're getting to the point where they're pretty low on cards in hand to not have much to reestablish a board post-wipe. Another one's a concealed weapon. On the Bloomkin? You got the trample trick for just full lethal? Oh my. Alright, well you got me, I guess. I mean, not much to say there. Everything just lined up 
just picture perfect for our opponent. That is just six and two heading into game seven. Or wow, I forgot how to do numbers. That's six and two heading into game nine. The final boss, win or lose, final game of magic for today. All right, here we are for the final game of magic for today with a pretty powerful hand. We are going to need to get a creature to get the red source out of the scene of the crime, but we can ill-timed explosion their early plays and try to win the late game with a doppelgang. We have a plan established. Their green deck, which could have main deck artifact removal for our scene of the crime, which would immediately lose us the game here, so let's hope for not that. Now we have a projector inspector to play turn three to have our creature on board to get our man of any color out of scene of the crime, get the investigator down too, if they don't kill it quickly. All right, well, we really need mana, so we're ditching a, an accusation here. Yep, for fourth land. I think with another detective coming up, we don't take this trade. We want to draw and discard another card. It would have been a very bad trade anyway, just a nervous gardener. It's grabbing them a land regardless. There's another face down. So here's investigator, draw a card, discard a card, probably discarding automaton. Or Analyst. They're both pretty weak here. Analyst at least triggers Inspector if we don't want to immediately board wipe next turn, so I guess I'll keep Analyst actually, weirdly. To combat trick us, I'll be pretty sad. Um, but I am already planning on board wiping sometime regardless. So losing the investigator isn't the biggest deal in the universe. Alright, we actually just straight up get to kill the Nervous Gardener. Doesn't feel bad at all. I mean, we're at 5 damage on board. Maybe we are trying to race... Explosion into Doppelgang is just like a big backup plan kind of thing. I try to hit a basic to play Projector Inspector as well. We did not. Surveillance Monitor is really good though. So let's keep that. Alright, Inspector trades into Eavesdropper. This is fine. Got the second inspector to play this next turn. Definitely not blocking that with investigator. I think it's fine to send analyst under the bus though. And that gets them to just spend their whole turn flipping a Warden. There's a Kellen. Spicy. Sixteen life. Can take another four on the crackback. Yeah, I don't think I need to binding this early. Let's uh, go back to digging for lands. Although, I don't know what I discard here. This is like the strongest stuff. I guess surveillance monitor at this point now with Kellen. Especially if I had gotten a forest, that would have been insane. But yeah, we've got the doppelgang. We gotta do the digging for lands. Is Kellen a detective? Oh, yes, he is. Give me the four. Unscrupulous agent that is obnoxious here. Yeah, 
have to choose whether or not I'm going for the board wipe or not, basically. If I am, we ditch Kellen. If I'm not, we ditch the board wipe. Could ditch the doppelgang. It is eight mana to really win. Ditch the explosion. Another face down. I'm going to believe in the power of the sand. Six out of eight now. Binding and get a clue for the turn is fine. The clue helps us make sure we hit land seven next turn. Oh, I don't have to tap a creature though to use this binding. Totally forgot about that. I guess we're tapping Investigator post-combat, then. Or I could just fully play the Kellen, which is also big. Yeah, 12 life. It's not gonna just die. Our opponent cracks their clue. It's a really close race here. I'm like just really close board states in general. Another warden. Well, that is the one that's going to get binding then. No, not removal to one mana removal even. Uh, now we die to a combat trick here. We don't have the combat trick. It's five mana to doppelgang for one, so I can't. And I can't cast makeshift binding without tapping a creature. Which means I can only hold one blocker up, which means I'm dead <laughs> to removal here. Uh. Yeah, I mean, the way the mana goes here forces me to wait for the eighth mana on the doppelgang anyway. We just are super desperate that we actually get to chump. If we get to chump, we're going to win. If we don't get to chump, obviously we're dead on board. This is the turn. Do they clear out the inspector? They do. God dang it. I could still top deck reasonable doubt, but that's the only thing that I could do here. Nervous Gardener. Shoot. I guess if I cracked the clue during my turn, I could have played that face up. Yeah, it would have been better than just threatening interaction that I didn't have. <sighs> well, winnable game then, if I cracked that during our turn, because resolving the doppelgang just ends it. Double makeshift binding, double warden on our board for two seven sevens at that point alongside the investigator. Ah, what a punt. Punt it out of the seventh victory. Just get a 6-3 here. Still think that's a fantastic run for this deck. It's got some awkward fixing as we really got punished by in that game. Having to tap our creatures every time to use that was a massive amount of damage throughout that game. Um... Yeah, this was a really good record for a late pivot on a green deck. Just sad that it absolutely could have been the 7 win. Um, 
but it just didn't get there because I was playing on autopilot too hard. Where you always crack the clues during your opponent's end step. So you can hold up all your instants, but I didn't have any instants, so should have just tried to hit a two drop and be a little safer against removal. If we did survive that last turn, that doppelgang would have completely closed it out for us. Yeah. All right. An absolute seven win run that is stopped in its track by some human errors, but still a really good run from the deck. I think this is probably the strongest deck we could have ended up in in the draft pod. Just would have been nicer to end up in green earlier in the draft so we could have had better fixing than the two scene of the crimes. Um, we really didn't see any topiary panthers, so I don't think there's anything I could have done about that, but obviously that would have improved this deck quite a bit. Uh, giving us great ways to mana fix while spitting a bunch of evidence into our graveyard. So we're looking to use those. But for the most part, deck played really, really well regardless. And again, could have been a 7-win run, maybe even a 7-1. I'm sure maybe one of those other two losses uh, was a, a bit of pilot error as well. So really, really good deck. Really happy with, the, uh, with how I drafted in general, even if I'm not super happy with how I played. But that is generally how things go. I've said it a lot, but if there was a uh, a format on Arena where you could just draft a deck and then just give it to somebody to <laughs> play the gameplay for you, I would do that. I, I much more enjoy the, the, daf the drafting and the deck building process, and I think that is more of what I excel at than the gameplay itself. So many little intricacies, it's so easy to miss out on. There's so many decisions per turn, it's so easy to go slightly on autopilot and crack a clue during your opponent's end step instead of during your turn and not play your 2-2 and die because of it. You can die from the smallest things. The smallest grains of sand stack up to destroy the giant dam. None of that made any sense. But that is going to end today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons and YouTube members for their support, as well as you for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video and you're interested in seeing more, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you some more on your recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. Other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.